This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Hello and welcome to Dialogue. DPRK leader Kim Jong-un was elected as General Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea at the Ace Workers' Party Congress this week. Well, the Congress also formulated a new five-year plan after Kim Jong-un said the previous plan has fallen short of its objectives. So what is different about the new plan and what challenges face further reform in the country? What lies ahead for diplomatic relations with China, the United States and South Korea? To find out more, I'm joined by Joseph Kim, a correspondent in Seoul, Zhao Tong, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Tsinghua Center for Global Policy, and Peter Kusnick, professor of history and director of Nuclear Studies Institute from the American University, and Sung Young Lee, Kim Koo, Korea Foundation professor of Korean studies at Fletcher School of Tufts University. And that's our topic. I'm Zhou Yue. Uh, so, Joseph, let me start with you. Uh, at this 8th Congress of the Workers' Party, Kim Jong-un was elected General Secretary of the Workers' Party. Well, he has been serving as DPRK's leader for quite some time. So, what is the importance of this new title? Well, we know this is a title that was held by his late father. So, this is also uh, showing to the DPRK public that uh, Kim Jong Un is now uh, ascending to those, to that status as well as level that his late father had, um, and it shows that Kim Jong Un perhaps is uh, uh, further uh, able to have a greater authority within the country as well as uh, in the government. And experts here that I've talked to within South Korea, they tell me that it's also going to show that he has greater control over uh, what is happening within the country. So it does seem that even though he has been the leader, uh, that uh, this new title actually does make it even more so that his power has uh, transcended what he has uh, previously. And Kim Jong-un also said uh, that the economic plan, the previous plan, ended in 2020, fell short. Well, it's very rare for DPRK leaders to admit it, uh, some shortcomings. So they also come up with a new plan. Will this new plan make any difference? Well, we're hearing from the DPRK through its state media saying that uh, they will further uh, rely on, uh, further build up self-reliance um, to ensure that this is different from how it's been because uh, they say that the five-year economic plan has not been successful and has failed given the fact that uh, the DPRK has been under global sanctions as well as we've seen in the last two years greater number of natural disasters happening in the country such as floods um, as a result of deforestation and otherwise. Uh, therefore, we are seeing that this new plan is building up and encouraging the DPRK to further uh, enhance its self-reliance. And uh, we've heard from Kim Jong-un within uh, some of these speeches saying that self-reliance has been the reason that they've been successful at building up its military. Now, whether or not this will be different from the five years that we've seen, we obviously will have to see whether or not um, that actually pans out. But it does seem that the DPRK is further emphasizing that their military might has been a result of self-reliance and now their economy will also be a result of their self-reliance. And to make matters worse, uh, DPRK also closes border in January to prevent the spread of COVID. Uh, so it seems that DPRK is more isolated uh, physically and economically from the rest of the world. Uh, how's the situation there and do they have plans to reaching out to the other parts of the world? Well, closing off its border has been closing off its borders has been one of the key policies that the DPRK has adopted uh, for its coronavirus um, prevention methods. Uh, we're not sure whether or not uh, the DPRK will loosen up these 
uh, measures anytime soon, especially given the fact that uh, Pyongyang has insisted and claimed that they've had no uh, coronavirus infections throughout this entire time. Uh, so we don't see, uh, we don't know whether or not the DPRK will open up its borders anytime soon, mm -hmm. but this has greatly affected uh, the market economy, especially because many people are reliant on the free markets that uh, do happen or the black markets that do exist within the DPRK. Uh, so we are hearing uh, reports that are coming out from uh, several uh, different agencies suggesting that this has really uh, impacted the DPRK economy and that the DPRK people are greatly suffering as a result of this policy. All right, thank you very much, Joseph. And we've also collected uh, some comments uh, from social media users who've been watching uh, the DPRK and its development. Let's take a look. Uh, Josh Smith said Kim Jong-un's ambitious new plan for the next five years is aimed at developing North Korea's shattered economy, but the proposals may falter in the face of major crises that have already stalled the young leaders' current projects. So uh, let me ask uh, our experts on this. Uh, Sung Yong, uh, could you please estimate uh, uh, the current uh, situation in DPRK, considering the sanctions, the cutting off uh, uh, of ties uh, because of COVID, and, and also its economic difficulty at home? The current situation is dire, perhaps the worst in the past 30 years. North Korea's economy, which is always hard to analyze, is expected to shrink this year by about 10 percent perhaps, which would be a record, a very devastating record, the worst since 1992 when North Korea's economy took a major blow in the wake of the collapse of the Soviet empire and Soviet subsidies. So the situation is terrible. The ruling party, Kim Jong-un himself, knows it. And of course, this multi-day long Congress is grand theater, its political performance. It imbues the people with hope. It consolidates the role of the party. It further strengthens the grip, the power that Kim Jong-un enjoys. So it's important to the government and to the people. At the same time, it must be exhausting. It's been going on for over a week. And Chao Tong, uh, in 2018, uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un signed an agreement to build relations and seek denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. But of course, we understand that President Trump is soon out of the office and Biden will be sworn in. So uh, what will happen to the agreement? Well, I think, you know, at uh, Singapore in 2018, Kim Jong-un promised to work towards the eventual goal of uh, nuclear-free Korean Peninsula. I think that, uh, you know, people still have hope that that uh, eventual uh, hope uh, will be uh, upheld um, by both North Korea and the incoming uh, U.S. administration. But if we look at uh, what has happened over the past couple of uh, years, uh, there are not many optimistic signs. Uh, Kim Jong-un was willing to trade part of his uh, nuclear facilities in exchange uh, for uh, you know, key uh, sanction uh, removal efforts uh, by the United States and the United Nations, but that effort did not succeed. So after that failure of uh, Hanoi summit, um, North Korea seemed to have further strengthened uh, its determination uh, to pursue uh, economic development uh, on the basis of uh, keeping and maintaining uh, its uh, nuclear deterrent capability. Mm. One very important uh, part of, this, of Kim Jong-un's report at the Ace Party Congress was uh, to detail uh, a wide uh, range of uh, nu nuclear uh, capability achievement uh, by North Korea over the last five years, including uh, very capable systems uh, like uh, the world's largest uh, heavy liquid field uh, intercontinental ballistic missile and its uh, launcher. North Korea has also revealed it has conducted uh, research yeah. in cutting edge technologies like multi warhead uh, missiles, uh, nu uh, nuclear powered submarines, etc. All these point uh, to a North Korean uh, intention. 
uh, to continue improving its uh, nuclear capabilities for the foreseeable future in anticipation of possible uh, improvement of American missile defense and uh, offensive uh, strike technologies. So uh, it looks like uh, North Korea has made a plan uh, to ensure that in the long-term future, uh, North Korea's nuclear deterrent could be reliable uh, and, uh, and, uh, and credible uh, in the minds of its enemies. So that makes any future U.S. Uh, DPRK uh, denuclearization talks much more difficult uh, than over the last uh, few years. And of course, uh, Peter, um, the uh, Trump administration originally applied maximum pressure on North Korea, and then at 180 degree turn, it had talks, but that didn't go nowhere. So uh, what are the options for Biden? Is it the repeat of uh, maximum patience of Obama or their new thinking on North Korea? We haven't seen much sign of new thinking <clears throat> from the Biden administration. Uh, the Biden administration has pretty much, if we look at the personnel, the people he's appointed, they've pretty much uh, brought back the old Obama diplomats and planners. So I don't anticipate a very new direction, but there is some hope uh, and there are a lot of dangers. The maximum pressure campaign has not worked. The strategic patience campaign has not worked. Really very little has worked. So we need to go some new directions at this point. And uh, if we look at, you've got Tony Blinken as the new Secretary of State, Jake Sullivan as the new National Security Advisor, and they're pretty much hardliners. Mm. Uh, Blinken's comments so far have not been particularly encouraging, a similar approach to the Obama approach. Uh, Wendy Sherman is going to be the number two person in the State Department, and I, th I think she's going to be a little bit more open-minded for looking for new alternatives. She actually visited North Korea with Madeleine Albright during the Clinton administration, mm. uh, but we're gonna, there, there, are, there is a lot of potential. Uh, uh, first of all, yeah. economic plight. Uh, does open some doors for negotiation and the possibility of making progress. Uh, they do need the sanctions to be lifted. They're pretty desperate about that. So that is something that the United States can diplomatically uh, offer uh, in exchange for North Korean progress. But if the demand is for complete denuclearization right from the start before we're going to have these negotiations, then that's going to fail. That kind of approach is not going to work. I, I know uh, the DPRK nuclear issue is probably a very hard, thorny one for Americans. But when Biden is preoccupied with so much things, COVID control, uh, economic recovery, will even a uh, DPRK issue come to the top of the list? Peter? Not for a while. I don't think there's going to be, it's not high on Biden's agenda at this point. There's not been a lot of discussion. And, and uh, Biden's own comments have not been particularly helpful. Biden has called uh, Kim Jong-un, he's called him a thug and a murderous dictator. Kim has called Biden a fool of low IQ and a rabid dog who needs to be beaten to death. So there's uh, this initial rhetoric, which is not very, very promising. But, and then the question is, one of the other questions is, Biden has also called for a hardline approach toward China. Mm. We know that the U.S. is going to need China's assistance if we're going to make any headway in this. So it's going to be part of a broader, broader concerns diplomatically. And there's a lot on Biden's agenda. He's got to deal with this situation yeah. in the United States now where we just, uh, just experienced a failed insurrection, a coup. We've got these right-wing networks, neo-fascist networks, that are proliferating in the United States. Biden's going to have to deal with that. He has to deal with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We've got close to 300,000 dead in the United States from this pandemic and complete ineptitude on the part of the Trump administration. So Biden's got to gear up on that and the vaccinations. He's got to deal with you know, Russia and China are high on the agenda for, for Biden. So I don't think that... Yeah. 
dealing with the DPRK sure. is going to be at the top of the list. And Zhao Tong, uh, um, of course, uh, Kim Jong Un told the Workers' Party's Congress this time that the U.S. Uh, is still the country's uh, number one in enemy, and and quote, no matter who is in power in the U.S., the true nature uh, of this and the spirit of the anti-DPRK. Uh, policy will never change. So, uh, will uh, North Koreans uh, try to reach out to Americans like it did uh, during the uh, Trump administration? What kind of thinking do you think North Koreans are now having? Well, I think uh, North Korea still has an interest in uh, engaging with the United States uh, to at least uh, get some of the economic sanctions lifted uh, from the back of its economic development. You know, those sanctions really uh, un undermine uh, North Koreans' uh, promise, uh, uh, prospect of economic development. But what they will give in exchange? So right now, North Korea is basically putting the ball in the court of the United States. The party, the, you know, Kim Jong-un's report at the party congress said very uh, clearly that uh, all you know, always dependent on what the United States uh, does. I think that's the traditional uh, tactic uh, by North Korea uh, to you know leave the pressure to its uh, d discussion uh, partner uh, without mm. elaborating what uh, measures itself uh, would be willing to commit to. Um, I think you know that's you know that offers opportunity uh, for the United States uh, to uh, be more proactive. The United States can use certain. Uh, measures uh, to mm. uh, seek clarification on the part of North Korea in terms of what North Korea wants in return uh, for some restraint on its nuclear but program. But if, as Peter said, uh, Biden is too preoccupied with other stuff, and also they think that North Korea is a very hard one, it's not easy to crack, uh, probably they will still wait on, and, and uh, the strategic patience will come off again. What will the North Korean do? I don't think North Korea would allow the uh, Biden administration to wait uh, much longer. North Korea has much greater leverage than before. It has you mean testing a out their nuclear and uh, missile programs again? Uh, exactly. North Korea just rolled out, again, the world's largest ICBM, which has not been flight tested. And North Korea has said very clearly it's working on even uh, more powerful nuclear weapons, solid field ICBMs and SLBMs. And, uh, you know, North Korea, after uh, researching and uh, developing these uh, new weapons, they need to conduct uh, testing uh, to prove their technical uh, reliability. Uh, so North Korea can resume uh, military provocations in terms of long-range missile tests to put pressure on the United States. Uh, so I think there is a lot of damage North Korea could do uh, to get the attention of the Biden administration. So Peter, uh, if it is a repeat of 2016 and 2017, uh, what will Biden do? Uh, uh, different, anything different from Trump? Well, we certainly don't want to see a repeat of 2017. That would be disastrous. We came very, very close to war in 2017. According to Richard Haas, the head of the Council on Foreign Relations, he thought there was a 50-50 chance of war. So even the uh, inconclusive friendship that was developed between Kim and Trump when they were exchanging love letters to each other, that was a lot better than uh, what was occurring in 2017. Uh, but during this time, uh, there was no real progress made in terms of denuclearization. Uh, in fact, we assume that the North Koreans have the capability and enough fissile material to develop seven new nuclear weapons a year right now. So they probably added 15, 14 or 15 during the time of this negotiation or non-negotiations with Trump. Uh, so that didn't work. The, uh, the most experts think that the North Koreans now have between 40 and 60 nuclear weapons. Uh, what is Biden going to do that's different? Uh, well, there are things that he should do. For example, there's House Resolution 152, which has 52 sponsors right now. And that call, calls for ending the Korean War. After all these years, it's time we have a peace treaty to formally end the Korean War. That is a do, basis do you think he will meet up. Kim Jong-un? 
to ninch that kind of agreement? Yes, I think that the North Koreans are very, very eager for a peace treaty. This is very much in the United States. It's the forgotten war. There's very little mention or thought about the Korean War. But in North Korea, where people were living in caves, where the United States destroyed every major city, bombed that country back to the Stone Age, this is very much a part of North Korea's consciousness and will be an important step for building trust. One of the co-sponsors is Gregory Meeks, who's going to be the head of the House uh, Foreign Affairs Committee. So that's a, that gives us a little bit of a step forward. Mm -hmm. I think easing of sanctions is something the United States can offer and should offer, rather than maximum pressure and by making the situation worse in North Korea. I think the United States should be thinking about ways to ease sanctions and have an incremental step-by-step -step negotiation, rather than all at once kind of approach that the Trump administration took. And what is China's role here, uh, Zhao Tong? Uh, because uh Recently, uh, Chinese uh, President Xi sent a message of goodwill to the leader of DPRK, and also we have celebrated 70 years of the Korean War, what we call the uh, war against, the, uh, against American aggression to aid the Koreans. But do you think China's uh, role has been evolved because of the changing uh, politics in, in U.S. and, and the, the North Korea? Uh, well, as you said, uh, the China DPRK relationship has greatly improved uh, since 2018. And uh, in fact, this year, uh, this year will represent the 60th anniversary of the signing of the friendship agreement uh, between the two countries. So uh, people anticipate the bilateral relationship will uh, warm up even further. Uh, I think China uh, certainly is in a position uh, to play a mediating role. Uh, you know, the domestic situation in the United States, I think, contributes uh, to Chinese leverage because I think by demonstration, despite all the troubles between U.S.-China relationship, uh, seeks to uh, find out areas of common interests and potential cooperation with Beijing. Mm. And North Korea, again, is uh, one of very uh, few areas the two countries can indeed uh, cooperate. Uh, I think, uh, looking forward, uh, China can uh, help uh, mediating a dialogue uh, in which all the major uh, parties, including North Korea, can join, jointly uh, discuss how they can mm. implement a step-by-step -step and phased approach uh, to reduce tensions and build confidence. And one specific measure they can do is to discuss what kind of denuclearization roadmap uh, should look like. That's an opportunity uh, China can provide uh, to North Korea so that uh, Pyongyang could use to clarify its uh, demands and expectations. I think that's very important uh, for uh, moving the denuclearization talks forward. Uh, that, does that mean uh, coming back to the six-party talk mechanism that China is being supported and the United States come on board? Zhao Tong? Well, I think China certainly uh, wants to uh, reinvigorate the six-party talks uh, somewhere down the road. But I think uh, initially uh, it requires some uh, uh, breakthrough uh, between uh, North Korea and the United States on the issue of uh, okay. North Korea's nuclear weapons. Uh, but I think China wants to broaden the discussion further. Uh, when uh, uh, relevant parties start to discuss issues like uh, peace regime or uh, security guarantees for North Korea. Uh, Right. Uh, the inter-Korean relations. Uh, Song Yun, uh, President Moon said that Seoul will also try to jumpstart uh, talks between the United States and the DPRK and also want to improve relations with the uh, North. Uh, do you think the DPRK uh, harbor the same uh, ambition? Not necessarily. Kim Yo-jong, the first sister of North Korea, has in recent months denounced the South Korean president using the same kind of really vile language that her brother used against Donald Trump in 2017, mentally deranged American daughters and so forth, Falling Moon, a craven, scared dog who wants to put his head through the American noose of flunky. So North Korea is not, at the moment, interested in reconciliation with South Korea. Of course, South Korea will do its best to try to ameliorate, uh, improve, North Korea's relations with the United States. But 
the stark dynamics of North Korea are that when there is a new American administration, American president, North Korea feels impelled to enhance its leverage by causing trouble. When Obama was a candidate in 2008, he talked about meeting Kim Jong-il, North Korea's leader then, the father. Uh, yet, very early in the Obama administration in 2009, Kim Jong-il um, conducted had his nation conduct the first long-range missile test in three years in April, and then the nation's second nuclear test on U.S. Memorial Day on May 25, 2009. Also, when Obama was re-elected in 2012, much of the same with a nuclear test mm. uh, on February 12 in 2013, right in the middle of Chinese Lunar New Year. So this is what North Korea does, lacking the kind of conventional leverage, economic power, soft but, power. But Song Yong, don't North you Korea think power. a rapprochement with South can also be served as a leverage against Americans that can drive a wedge between the two allies? Well, sure. And that's exactly what North Korea sought in 2018 by sending a delegation led by the First Sister to South Korea to soften South Korea up and then to proposition Donald Trump for summit meeting. So that seemed to be going swimmingly throughout 2018. But I suppose the Kim regime is not entirely pleased with what South Korea has delivered. Probably Kim Jong-un expected the kind of very generous aid, uh, including lots of cash, that his father, Kim Jong-il, enjoyed uh, in his relationship with South Korea in the early 2000s when South Korea gave North Korea almost a billion dollars, no questions asked, in aid from 2003 to 2008. But that's not been possible under UN sanctions. So mm. Kim Jong-un seems rather displeased with Seoul. And Peter, uh, we haven't seen much talks from the Biden team about the end goal uh, of his administration towards North Korea. Is it uh, still denuclearization or is it uh, living with uh, the current situation? What is your estimate? Uh, m most of what I've seen so far is talk about denuclearization. And Biden has said that he would conduct diplomacy with North Korea and would even talk to Kim uh, if he got certain commitments up front <clears throat> and action toward denuclearization. That's, I think that's unrealistic. I think a more realistic approach would be a freeze on North Korea's uh, nuclear programs and missile development programs, and uh, building up a basis of friendship and trust uh, and peace on, on the peninsula. Uh, North Korea's response when the U.S. invaded Iraq was that the one mistake that Saddam Hussein made hmm. was to not have nuclear weapons. Okay. And that and if they had nuclear weapons, the U.S. would not have been able to invade. And he fears the same thing in terms of U.S. relations now with uh, North Korea. And Chao Tong, if uh, DPRK really, as you said, continue to test its uh, nuclear and uh, intercontinental ballistic programs, do you think China will probably accept the de facto situation? Uh, I, I don't think China uh, would like to accept North Korea as a de facto uh, nuclear armed uh, state. But of course, North Korea would be uh, smart in terms of how it will conduct future provocations, even if it doesn't resume uh, test, uh, flight testing of long-range missiles. North Korea may conduct other forms of provocations. One indicator uh, in the uh, Congress report uh, is that North Korea is about to launch a military uh, reconnaissance satellite mm -hmm. in the near-term future. So North Korea could use civilian rocket launch as, as a cover uh, for uh, ballistic missile technology uh, testing. And that would uh, put the major powers, including okay. uh, China, into a very difficult decision in, uh, thinking, in uh, you know, deciding how to respond. Well, wow, that will still remain a challenge for the world. Thank you very much, Zhao Tong, and thank you, Peter. And you've been watching Dialogue here on CGTM. I'm Zhou in Beijing. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.